Hey guys, Tom from Thomas Brown Photo here. So I'm going to show you a couple techniques that I use and um, incorporate into my photos a fair bit. Uh, the reason for this video is I'm getting sent through quite a large number of um, direct messages through Instagram asking me how I create mood in um, Photoshop, like in post-production, how I add atmosphere and how I achieve my cinematic uh, look to my photos. So uh, rather than replying to everyone, I thought, well, I'll make this video and show you how I do it. It's by no means the only way to do it, but uh, I found it worked for me and my workflow. So um, let's jump in and hopefully you can learn something. For this first image, it's just a bit of a factory scene that I've taken um, at, in blue hour just after sunset. Um, so the first step for atmosphere is what, what I do is um, duplicate the layer. So that's Command J on Apple and Control J on Windows. Um, then we go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Now this um, effect is called the Orton effect and it's primarily used amongst landscape photographers. Um, so what it really does is creates a bit of a diffusion um, and you can mask it in you know, selectively so it doesn't go over your whole image. So after we do the Blur, and it's trial and error by the way, um, so just have a few goes at it and see what you come up with, but Gaussian Blur, and then on that same layer once you've added the Blur, I go to Adjustments under the Image tab and go down or go to Brightness and Contrast. Now here I increase the brightness and the contrast almost equally, um, maybe a little bit more brightness and the point of the contrast is to make the blacks black. Um, hit OK. Now it's um, simply just reducing the opacity down. I find anywhere between like 15 and 25 is a good area. So here we go. I'll, I'll go to 25. Um, and it's sort of just giving it that bit of, you know, softness. Now, if it's too soft or you have you want to keep a bit of detail down in here, um, what I'll do is layer mask, invert it, and then i just simply paint in where I want the Orton effect to present itself. Um, so, yeah, I'll just do a little bit through there. And that's about it, really. Um, See, it's just giving it a nice, nice softness through here when I click the layer on. Um, yeah. Okay, so the second step, and this is the one that everyone wants to know, is how do I get my shadows to look consistently the same um, with that cinematic blue tonality? Um, a lot of people think it's just curves adjustments, and most of them are pretty right. You can get curves looking nearly the same as this, but I found the effect works um, a little bit better when you go through color lookup. Now every um, version of Photoshop or recent version of Photoshop's got this. I think anything from CS6 through. Um, so color lookup and then you open up the properties um, of the color lookup layer and in here you'll find all these great looks um, which you can experiment with. But the one I go to is in the abstract um, drop down box and it's Sienna Blue. And basically what it does is it gives you that flat blue throughout the shadows and it almost does a bit of a yellow tinge to the highlights. And sometimes that's fine, but I like to retain my original mid-tones and highlight colors whilst getting this cinematic blue sort of shadow fall off. So to combat that, I double click on that layer and I use the blend if um, portion of this layer style palette. And I simply just grab these handles and I move it along, which which reveals the original highlights on the layer below. And I get to about here and then I hold Option on Mac or can Command on Windows and then I split this handle across. So now you can see that it's kept, it's kept my highlights the same color, but it's still giving me that, that subtle blue um, tonality in the shadows. So if I click that on and off, you can see it's it's only a subtle difference, but that, guys, is majority of my Instagram account. Um, that's what I'll finish on is that color lookup table, sienna blue, and then I'll tweak tweak it with the blend if feature just to get my um, my original highlights coming through. 
So the next one is a photo out of my regional moments book. Um, it's just an old service station um, at sunset or a few minutes after sunset, bit of color in the sky. Um, so I'm not gonna add the Orton effect to this because I don't feel like it needs it. Um, so once again, color lookup table, and then I just go to the properties for that layer and go abstract profiles um, and select sienna blue in the drop down. Uh, and as you can see, it's given me that nice flat blue sheen for the shadows, um, but it's changed my sky and I didn't necessarily want that. So double click on the layer to open up the layer style dialog box. And um, yeah, just grab these handles. I'll bring them up a little bit. This is starting to let us have a bit of color again. And then I hold option and split that handle. Um, and that will reveal majority of the original sky color. And like I said earlier, it's personal preference, what you like, but um, generally I like to use this blend, blend if feature just to give me my, my sky colors whilst maintaining the cool cinematic blue shadows. Um, so that's that one. And here's another one um, which a lot of you will probably find most interesting and this treatment that I've just sort of showed you with the Orton effect and the color lookup table, they tend to work best on pictures with completely black backgrounds. So how you achieve that, um, you know, there's a few ways to do that um, and there's a few ways to do that in post where you can mask out your subject and paint in a black background. Um, because the color lookup table, especially the sienna blue profile, will work best on completely black surfaces. Um, as you can see there, it's just giving us this really cool look. Um, so I'll double click. I just want to get rid of this yellow because it wasn't like that. Um, bring up these sliders about halfway and then I'll split it holding option. And then just to reveal some of the original colors. And it's good when you do the blend if um, and you split it like that, it gives you a nice happy medium I found where you've, your blacks aren't crushed anymore. It sort of lifted them up into this nice near cinematic feeling um, image. And that's how I go about it. All right guys, so that was it. Uh, hopefully you picked up a couple tricks and techniques. Um, yeah, so the Orton effect, by no means is it a new thing. It's um, used probably used too often in landscape photography, um, but it works just as well for sort of cinematic contemporary sort of um, images. And the color lookup tables, I highly recommend you go through and check out um, all the other ones in the, in the drop down box. There's some really cool looks in there. Uh, I'm going to make more of these videos, so if you've got any questions on post-processing um, like in Photoshop or um, camera gear related questions, uh, send them through and I'll try and answer them in a video. Um, so hit subscribe and if you're not already, follow me on Instagram at Thomas Brown Photo, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.